I think the, the precision approach is probably best illustrated with the, the new, um, uh, uh, new drugs that are targeting specific proteins. So when we're talking about neurodegenerative diseases, um, just <clears throat> kind of as a review, Alzheimer's disease, the two pathological hallmarks, if you look at the brains of someone with Alzheimer's disease under the microscope, you're gonna see those classic um, amyloid, uh, amyloid plaques and uh, the tau tangles. And so right now, the main thrust of, of clinical trials has been directed towards the amyloid in different, um, different stages of uh, plaque development. So all the way from monomers up to protofibrils and fibrils, and then ultimately the plaques. And so the different monoclonal antibodies are trying to target different aspects of the amyloid cascade to figure out what's gonna have the most benefit for our patients. So I think that that's pretty uh, targeted in terms of disease. <clears throat> That's different than our medications for Alzheimer's disease up to this point. Uh, cholinesterase inhibitors, um, such as Aricept or Dinepazil, and there are several others, they don't actually target the disease process itself. They don't target the amyloid, they don't target the tau. They're just trying to, to bulk up acetylcholine in sort of a general way, which is probably one reason why we see more benefits from the cholinesterase inhibitors in diseases other than Alzheimer's disease, even though it was originally FDA approved for Alzheimer's disease. Um, in addition to the anti-amyloid uh, uh, drugs, we also have the first anti-tau treatment that's coming out now, and there's a really exciting trial that's coming up. Um, it's going to combine lecanemab, one of the anti-amyloid monoclonal antibodies, with an anti-tau drug called E2814. And it's, it's really exciting that it's gonna be applied to both patients with some symptoms, but also those people that are pre-symptomatic. Now the pre-symptomatic, we can say, well, how do you know they're pre-symptomatic? And that's because they're gonna use the Diane cohort, the dominantly inherited Alzheimer's network, to identify individuals that harbor genetic mutations that are essentially deterministic for developing Alzheimer's disease. So that would be mutations in AP or presenilin-1 or presenilin-2. So you have a good idea that these people are going to develop um, dementia. And so that provides a unique opportunity to apply these therapies, an anti-amyloid, an anti-tau treatment, to see if you can really change the trajectory of the disease. Now in a perfect world, we're gonna see that you know, we're able to prevent symptoms from ever occurring. I think what's probably more likely is that we're, either, we're gonna see um, you know, a slowing in the rate of onset of disease, um, or a slowing of the progression of disease in those pe uh, patients that already have symptoms. So we're coming a long way. We're, we're definitely not there yet, but it's really exciting to see what we've been able to accomplish in the past few years and what the next few years are gonna look like.